in this morning. I made the camera guy wait <laughs> 45 minutes. My alarm didn't go off, so we're rushing. And Noah's making it a little bit difficult because it's still really humid and he's... There we go. There we go. There. I would much rather have him pull ahead and pull behind. One of the other trainers is already there. The other trainer's gonna be late. We're set to be there at 11.59. Only a minute early. Three minutes early. Look at him. How's he been? Hi. Oh my goodness. Is there so much going on? Are these your friends? Hi. Hi guys. I'm Kaylin. I'm Luis. Nice to meet you. You are so cute. How's he been? Good. Is he walking well? Um, our walker told us that this is a better leash and we're trying this one. I don't know if it's a... I love that harness. The, the harness? harness? Yeah, I mean yeah. harness. Yeah. yeah, it's my favorite. Okay, so. Just a lot of the times the Frenchie body type can step out of it. Yeah, that's what we're struggling with like his... He like steps his out of yeah. it sometimes, yeah. So, um, I'm trying to think of this one, what it what it's called. She has this little pink harness that's on the front too, because she tried that and then she was just stepping out of it. And it's clips on the front and it's amazing for Frenchies. Like it fits the body type so well. So I'm wondering what... I don't know what brand it's called. We're, we're figuring out because walking is like they're good and bad days, like real. Okay. Like, we'll have a lot of new exercises to practice. What a good boy. I actually wrote to you on um, Instagram. Yeah, you gave me uh, advice for him. Oh, yeah. he was uh, the separation anxiety. Oh, yeah. what a, did I send you the video or? You sent me a video and you gave me, um, I think, your assistance um, information. Oh, the other trainer yeah, here. The other trainer, how? Yeah. Oh, how's everything going? Well, we're still working on it. Yeah, of course. We're still working on it. Yeah. That takes time. Um, so, what what exactly is going on? Remind well, me. He had issues when he was a puppy, and we kind of just let it work itself out because we figured because he was a puppy, he was just wasn't used to being home alone. Yeah. And he did a lot better. He like we were able to leave him like a while at home alone. Then okay. it just recently about. I would say about a month ago, a month or two ago, he started to bark a lot, but it's like okay. at the top of his lungs, like yeah. something's wrong with him, he cry. If when he's quiet, he cries the whole time. Okay. He just doesn't want to be at home alone. Got it. Um, and he was kind of like that in the beginning? It wasn't as bad. Like when we would leave, he would probably bark for like the first like 15 minutes. Okay. But then he would be quiet the rest of the time. Um, no, boo. But now he's getting to the point where he'll bark for like the, if you're gone for two hours, there's been times where he'll bark for the full two hours. Really? Yeah. Okay. And we give him melatonin because we okay. that, that was good for them. And yeah. it doesn't seem to work. Doesn't anymore. help him. Um, did you crate train him? That's probably what I had asked you originally, huh? We didn't because I don't know if maybe in his, where he was prior, they traumatized him with the crate because he's absolutely traumatized. Oh. He actually just started to like want to go in the crate Even okay like, while i'm sitting there i'll put him in there I'll okay put his bed in there. I'll, do, I'll feed him treats while he's in there yeah but like it's just i think at the same time where his separation anxiety started again was that he started to want to go in the crate even for just a few say like 30 minutes if i'm next to him okay i started going like a little bit further away every day so i'm starting to put him in the crate little by little to see if maybe that's something that we can work yeah. on. Yeah, so I'm about to post this video and if you DM me and remind me, I can just send it to you before I post it. Mm -hmm. It's like, how did you create desensitization? Yeah. So here's the thing, you can always try just like a gated off area. That, and that's where he stays in, in the hall. Or what, in well, the where does he area. sleep? The same place. He sleeps in there? Yeah, in the gated area. And so when you leave, you put him in there and it's not enough. Yeah, no, and then the thing is during the day, he's there but the majority of the day, he'll be there quietly in the hallway. He'll take his naps there. His food is there. His bed is there. He loves that area in the daytime. So it's not like okay. It's not like he has a bad association with that area. He does he have view of the door? He does. That's it. Is there any room you could switch him he into? Can close off because the hallway is pretty long. We could probably close off the hallway where he wouldn't be able to see the door. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that's that, what I would first try. 
Well, think about it. If they, yeah. I mean, if he sees the door, then he's just obsessing the whole time. It's like, that's the door she went out of. That's the door she's going to come back into. Like, oh my God, when is she coming back? Yeah. I was saying that. I was like, I think it's just him seeing us leave that freaking Yeah. I've seen just a switch from like blocking off the dog to even being able to get to the door go so, so and far. And he lays down in front of the door. The minute oh. he sees us getting ready, yeah. it's like he knows and he lays in front of the door. Oh, wow. I told you, I think that that was the problem. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would try that and then I would definitely, um, if that doesn't work, then go to the crate. Okay. But you're doing everything right, like making his place a safe place. He's sleeping there, not with you. He, he eats his meals in there. Yeah. Um, aside from that, everything is right. And then I can also send you, um, if you have to go to the crate, like the crate desensitization. Because the thing about the crate that sometimes helps more is that they're forced to settle down. You know, like they can't pace around or like their mind can't wander. So. That's why it's typically the most effective way to solve it. Yeah. But try it and definitely let me know how he's doing with For that. Sure. Yeah. Um, and then there's no, you know, I mean, like melatonin, CBD oil, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Um, there's, it just depends on the dog. Some stuff takes the edge off, but it's really the desensitization work that I see, you know, the most for sure. Yeah. Keep me updated, okay? Oh. Yeah, oh, he wants to say hi. Like hi. Dog. Yeah, he's a really good boy for his breeds. I'm like really impressed. I think they usually have a lot of issues. I think it's because since we got him, we've literally just exposed him to everything. So good. I know. I was just saying I'm so glad I brought him at three months because of the noises. Just like you don't even realize how much they're exposed to. Yeah, It's amazing. Hi, I'm Kaylin. Nice to meet you. Who is this? Jake. Jake. Oh, this is Jake. Hello. Jake sees Dr. Lisa, right? Oh, awesome. Oh, yes. Yes. Awesome. How is he? He's doing okay. We just spent two hours at the dog park. Oh, you did? Two hours? Yeah, we did a meet-up with all of his siblings. All oh his litter mates live in New York. No way. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. How did it go? Do they all remember? Uh, well, there's two of them that are really close. Him and his younger, like the little, the runt of the litter are really close. Mm -hmm. They seem to all remember. But, oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, they're, they're pretty good. How old is he now? He is almost a year. He'll be a year at the end of the year. Oh, okay. That's like, so cool. Everyone's in New York. Yeah, yes. Really? Yeah. Oh my gosh, how cool. He is so cute. Oh, he's amazing. He's very scared of men. Men? And mostly me. Really? You too? He does not like me much. Oh. If there's some kind of dominance thing going on. We'll say his name, say Jake. Jake. Jake! The minute you say his name Jake! <laughs> yeah, that's what matters most, right? Yeah. So he's good with other dogs. He's really good with other dogs. Look, he's, so he's letting him pet him. What is it more so in the house? Do you think? Uh, even at the dog park, I had to like, I had to, it took me like 15 minutes to get him. He does not like me, and I tried to head on, head off, shaving, not shaving, talking like there, like everything. Oh my goodness. And you've you've been there since he was a puppy, right? Uh, we've had him for a month. Oh, you've so, had him for a month. Uh, oh. So he comes to work with me every day. Oh. So I spend okay. About seventy percent of the time, he's just with me. And what kind of dog is he again? He's a Shiba. Oh, sorry, he's a Jindo Shiba. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. So cute. I mean, they're very set in their own ways, of course. But it's only been a month, so we we definitely can yeah, get him. We're getting, we're getting better. Oh. Some of it, I think, is jealousy. For sure. Yeah. So, but he's okay with like men when he's out. Yeah. Are you guys both from Japan? <laughs>
Big's from Korea. Oh, he is? Yeah. And when you say he doesn't like you, it's not like aggression, right? It's just no, like no, he'd no, rather he's, just he's, he's not be. The whole time. Okay. Like, that being that was a, yeah. kind of a stop thing. Yeah. Um, he just won't let me touch him. Okay. He, it's definitely a fear. Okay. Like, oh, okay. He hides under the bed. Like he's been, oh. I just like get him out from under the bed. Oh. oh my goodness. And dad's the one who takes you to the park for two hours. <laughs> oh, you do everything? <laughs> Hi. He is so beautiful. I love him. Time? Time plus a little bit of desensitization work, I think. Yep. Especially for the breed. I see this a lot in like Shebas. I, it's like probably the most common thing. Like if I get a call that says like my dog doesn't like me, I'm like, do you have a Sheba? Yeah, really. yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Um, they're just very like independent, you know, in their own ways. But yeah, time will definitely help. And then, um, do you guys what, do? You, have you guys done any kind of training with him? Nope. Okay, training like the training and getting him to respect you and that bond will a hundred percent help. Yes, yeah, so we'll give you all kinds of tips. Oh, he does. That's what I think I knew. He had separation yeah, anxiety, right? I think that's what we're gonna work on in the training. Okay. But I'm sure it's gonna be all. It's all. We'll all tie it together. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm so excited. Oh my gosh. So he's been doing good. So good. good. Yay. How have you been doing with the nipping? Not as bad. I mean, he has his days and his moments. Yeah. But so, he still nips a little. Yeah. My hands are all cut up, but. Oh, oh. cute. <laughs> he was a bad mouther in the beginning. Yeah. yeah. So you guys. The first day I met him, I went out like, like all little like teeth marks. All oh, I can take that. Like, oh, really? Yeah. But second time I saw him was much better. Oh, good. Good. So good. Really, like still nips, but it's. Yeah. Significantly more controlled. Like, actually, like, play he plays. He plays now in a, in a different oh, like. Good. It used to be the only way he played. Now at least he plays like a regular dog. Okay. In addition to sometimes. Yes. Yes. Good. Oh my gosh, he is so cute. You're adorable. <laughs> oh, cute. <laughs> I know, I know. Say hi, Nobu. 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 Hi. He's like not a fan of this humidity. Yes. Where did I put my phone? Oh my gosh, this is so cute. Are you serious? <laughs> Jake! Well, playing is kind of new for Noble, right? Yeah, he doesn't really know how to play yet. <laughs> Because Oso just bullies him. <laughs> Good checking in. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It was like you were just one of those. Nobu likes him though. It's cute. Hi. Hello. Bronx! Oh my gosh, so pretty! Hi! Oh, my God. oh hello! Look at how red! Oh my gosh, I'm Kaylin! Sorry, my hand. Wrong hand. Gorgeous! Oh my gosh, you're so orange! That's Nobu! Ravi was like, play with me, Nobu! <laughs> So cute! I know, it's so red. It was so nice to meet you guys. 
Yeah, you say too. goodbye. It was so nice. Was He's so like, nice I'm hot. Yeah. I am hot. Oh, you no, guys are gorgeous. so cute. Thank you. Thanks for coming, you guys. Oh, he's so chill. He is very chill, but we just didn't know because he's so big. Like how that. Oh my gosh, he's like not big at all. I've seen like Pyrenees, Great Pyrenees on there. I know they're more strict with it now, you know, but they. I mean, he would fit for sure. In like. They, I mean, they kind of curl up. It's a lot easier than you ever think. Like everyone always freaks I out. Pepe on that plane. That was fine, yeah. Was like I mean, have you seen my dog Grizzly? He's like seventy pounds. Like, oh yeah. I usually bring him to New York. That's who I usually bring. So he can curl up, but he's like kind of in another person's seat. And only once did somebody like complain and was like annoying. But then they're like, okay, we'll upgrade you. <laughs> I'm like, okay, great. So they moved me up. <laughs> one time I had Pepe on a plane on the way back to Thailand. On the way out, he had explosive diarrhea. And the people on the were, plane? On the, it was so, I felt bad. That's like Pepe, my. Myself, yeah. People were so, I was so lucky. The people next to me were so, so nice. nice. Oh. Like, like, luckily, he had the diarrhea like, right into a blanket. So, like, I just like, pulled it up the blanket and, like, and you could throw it away. Like, oh my gosh. Really That's like my worst nightmare. I always wonder like what what's gonna happen. Anyway, so nice to meet you and your So friend. nice to meet you too. Bye guys. Jackie, bye. Bye. I know. He gets so hot. He like won't walk. I literally need to get him like a carrier or a stroller. <laughs> He actually walked here like a 10 minute walk and that was huge for him. Oh, he loves ravioli. Oh my gosh. He hasn't really played. Oh. Um, like, like sort of. Obviously a big player. Yeah. It's so good. Or he plays with my friend's little Cavapoo who looks kind of like ravioli, but she's a lot smaller. I feel like they're perfect size. Oh my goodness. You did? Yeah. You love her. She's so cute. Nobu, should we say hi to who else is here? Nobu! Hi, Bronx! Hi! Oh, hi. He's like, I just want treats. Is it okay? I don't know. Oh, yeah. He can have whatever. Hi! Who's this one? Who's the corgi? This is Gordy. Gordy, I'm Kaylin. Oh, Gordy. Hi. Oh. oh my gosh. How old is he? He's three months. Oh, was he mouthing? Yeah. He was biting? No, no, no. Oh, oh. Bronx is so cute. Oh my gosh. Adorable. It's a work in progress. It's actually. Um, Dog. Oh yeah, they it's just amazing. get so excited. He's, it's just yeah. yeah, it's just he the excitement when we're outside. Play. It's just too much stimulation. You just to have play. to break his focus yeah. constantly right. and right. train him to first be able to handle like a couple seconds out, right? And right. then keep doubling, you know, and just know to check in. So, Bronx. And then I missed what you said about the harness. Did, did, did okay, they so, use the harness? so so we have a harness, right? But it's like um. So we have the harness, the, the same one that goes with this, uh -huh. but I didn't put it on today because it's like, so, okay, so it's the Martin deal, right? So the whole purpose is kind of like to kind of correct him. We're trying to do everything. We have a prong collar. She's against it. I, I'm kind of not against it, but I don't use it because she's against it. Um, we have everything. I'm against it. So we're like, yeah, yeah. And I, I know. I know you guys. Trust I me. I follow you guys. <laughs> That's why I'm like, all right, let me just be honest. So what about the... We have everything. We're trying everything. And did we're you like, do okay, the like, easy walk harness? That's it's like have. a yeah. martingale on the front. We clips on the front. Yeah. Yeah. So we, yeah. We, have, we connect both of them with the leash. We have it. That one is my favorite by yeah. far, <laughs> for do. sure. Because it's like um, a double martingale right. and, and you can control the body. The other one. And you then it's are less... a good looking golden, that's for sure. Yes, yes you are. Because yes. He's amazing, like, he's amazing overall, period. But at home, yeah. he's like super. Oh, good boy. Doesn't yeah. bite anything. That's what's most important. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And then he gets along with people, dogs. Yeah, and Just he's needs super to friendly work on the self control. We, we got yeah. him at eight yeah. weeks and we made sure to socialize him immediately. Yeah. And so all we did was take him to like puppy. Oh, oh boy. 
we took I'll let Nova go. Did you meet Jake? Can you go say hi to him? Bronx, come. You got him? I'm like, somebody will grab him. I mean, that's how, it just takes like a couple minutes, honestly. Yeah. yeah, just going out, directing his focus. Bronx, sit. Yes, like he follows the directions so well, you just have to show him. Yeah. yeah. You're just the typical golden puppy when you're out. Yeah. You're excited. Okay, go play. Yeah, go play. Yes. <gasps> and a check-in on your own. Oh, he's such a good boy. Yes. Oh, and now you're going to roll in the dirt. Now you're going to roll in the dirt. Yes. Oh, go play. And then one thing that I would start doing, this is so hard in New York, is um, when he gets to go and say hi, I don't know if you've seen a video of this of mine, when he is going to go say hi to a person or another dog, is to get him to check in with you first. Okay. Super hard, because people are just like, oh my god, right, cute right, dog. Right, right, right. So as much as you can, like if somebody asks you, like, oh, can our dog say hi? Oh, can I say hi to your dog? I'm like, one second, Bronx, sit. <laughs> Look. Ah, right here. Bronx. Yes. Okay. Now go say hi. So that he doesn't think um, being in his just, own world gets right. him what he wants. It's like asking your permission gets him what he wants. And then you ensure that he's controlled, you know, because if he sees somebody, his excitement shoots up. And then if you let him like go right here. He could jump on that. You know, he's just so excited. Right, right. So it's like, okay, first you can go well, say he, hi. He, he's he's the opposite. When when he's excited and he goes to someone, he goes low. Oh, that's he good. He never jumps up. Oh, good. That's he's really good. Just, just drops down like. Okay. Me, touch me okay, this. good. Like, so I think it, it'd be more so for that. Like he sees something he wants right now. He's like, oh, got to right. get there. Right, right. So instead of that, it would be like, okay, sit, check Calm in. Down, right. Now go and say hi nicely. Yep. Leave it. Bronx. Bronx. Yes. Okay, go play. Go ahead. And just consistently getting him to check in. And that's hard when you know you, like you, your dog is having a play, play date. Right. Um, Nobu. Nobu. <laughs> What's he doing? Oh, God. Um, to not just let them play it out, you know? Right, but right, it just right. takes a couple times teaching them how to control themselves while playing, and then he'll he'll maintain that for sure. You don't want that. patience and just continue, you Exactly. Know, yeah, you guys know, you've done a lot of the training inside, for sure. Excuse me, sit. Forget about the dogs. Yeah, there's grass here. Hi. Bronx. Excuse me. Everyone's eating the grass. Look, Bronx is like waiting. Such a good boy. He's gonna be tired. <laughs> Are you tired? Good. Yes. Oh, so cute. Such beautiful coloring, really. Have you guys worked on stay or yes. wait? Yes. Um, it's when he's meeting new people. Right. Inside, outside, yeah. wherever. Anywhere. I mean, so so like if, if if we take him out and he and he he's goes the grass. and he doesn't have anything, then he's fine. Actually, no, he might still let out a little bit. Okay. Like a little bit. Yeah. But, but if he's excited, he, he, like, he'll be. Yeah. So self-control training just all around will help with that, getting him to control himself. Because right now it's like he sees kind of just what we were talking about, about breaking his focus on what he wants to get to. Right. right now he sees that person and his excitement shoots up. So where I told you, like, if he goes and approaches that person when his excitement is up here, right, he's right. up here when he's meeting the person. And when I said, like, typically dogs jump up then, that's where he's peeing at. So if he sees the person, the dog, and you're like, oh, to get there, you have to sit and control yourself. It's going to be a lot better. It's not 100%. So it typically takes self-control training and the neutering to completely get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, some dogs, if it's just a little bit of pee that's coming out, some dogs just from like self-control in general, just doing more stays, more weights, like teaching him to go to his bed, stay when somebody's at the door, then going and getting the door. So just all of those exercises. Yeah. Is just, yeah. Like just teaching him to get to what he wants. He has to control himself. So the peeing is just like 
just total loss of self-control. You know, just like I get up to you, I'm just so excited, I don't know what to do but pee. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's the same exact thing kind of with the jumping up. So okay. definitely working on that with him will go will go so far. Cause like instead of just letting it all go, he's like, Okay, I have to control myself, I right. have to control myself and then he's holding it in. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Who's this? Hi, I'm Kaylin. Nice, 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 nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. This is who? Ozzy. 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 How is he? He's great. Um, the only thing is, uh, he wears it. We make him wear his booties on long walks because he drags his the tips of his paws and he oh. files the middle toenails down so low oh. that every like you know on a long walk they'll bleed. Yeah. Oh my so, god. Sure he doesn't pull advice. backwards, he just like drags them. Notice that he stands on like his front foot. Like, yeah. Or, like, no, he stands typically on like the, like, the heel of his paw and not like so, I don't know, puppy like. It's strange. But I can take the booties off if you want to have a look. Yeah, I want to see. Well, you don't have, I think I can see how he walks. Yeah. Um, but it's just like all the time, or is it when he's in his own world, he's pulling ahead or Most of pulling the time. backwards? Most of the time he does it, not all the time. When he gets really tired, then he really starts what? doing it. And yeah. then, so like uh, if we took him to the dog park, which is like four or five blocks from our house. Yeah. On our way back, then he'll start moving. He's really so good. he's worn him down oh too much. I'm gosh. sure walks are okay. Okay. Yeah. But we noticed that we were in California for six weeks, and we noticed on the beach, even when he's sprinting, when he starts to get tired, um, he still drags them because I can see in the sand the little drag mark you really? know, from like his paw. Yeah, that he was doing but it doesn't it. seem to affect him. Like it doesn't. Yeah, lie. yeah. Doesn't no, that's all. Bleeding. That's all you can do. Yeah, I think, um, especially like if it were happening all the time, I'd be like, okay, we need some tips on how to get him to focus. But the yeah. fact that it's he gets tired and then does it, I think it's something that's just special to him. Like that's just how his his feet work, yeah. basically. Um, but what you can do is even when he's taught, I would like maybe bring a treat out when he's tired yeah. to get him to heal yeah. and focus because okay. that might like perk him up yeah, a little sure. bit. Do you know if, there's, if we can like train his wrist to potentially make him stronger? Because he was worried that he might have had too much protein where his shoulders were becoming a little too bulky. And then what were you why? feeding him? Um, Origin. Two weeks later, it has, like, yeah, that, that is a lot blood. of protein. Did you switch yeah. it? Um, not yet. We were considering well, looking good, into different so. ones. And yeah. <laughs> Like maybe not do grain free, like maybe at least include some grain. It just depends on the dog. Like a vet that I um that I trust so much here was like dogs can have grain. Like okay. and Frenchies especially, yeah. But the too much protein could be it. I don't see too much protein making his shoulders bulk up so much that he'd have like I, I've literally never heard of that. Um but it, I mean, Frenchies are like one in a million. Of course, yeah, every Frenchie yeah, is like different, different, but like has different issues. <laughs> so this is Nola? Yeah, this is Nola. How is she? She's good. We're still learning a lot. Hi. Watching your videos. <laughs> She's adorable. How old is she? She's four and a half. Wait, are they like siblings? No. They're not? They were, no, they, he was born a few weeks before her. Oh, okay. Wow. Hi, Nola. Sweetie, hi. Is Ravioli your cousin? Somewhere along the line. <laughs> hi. Hello. Yeah, we haven't quite gotten the no jump. The on jumping. Yet. Yes. Oh, she's so cute. So how's she doing with all the puppy stuff? The potty training, uh, all that. D? Oh wow. The breeder was like, if you do puppy pads, you're gonna take two steps back. So then yes. Oh, the breeder back told back. you that? Yeah. That's a really good breeder then. So she's good. That's and amazing. She can definitely hold her bladder. So okay, great. good. Um, I might be able to. Um, but. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. Oh, there's. Did you get the bowl? Yeah. Oh, okay. So she'll, she's pretty good, but when she's in new places, it's a little bit, like, mm -hmm. you still have to teach her that she can't go. Right, in right, but in new places. Part, she knows, like, when we say, like, outside, like, she's going to the bathroom, and then when she's safe, and she's body, and she's, like, outside, yeah. she knows that's what she's cool. doing. Cool. Did you crate train her, too? For a month, yes. It didn't go well? She just okay. cried. It got worse. Yeah. Like the first few nights, a week, I would say, even, she didn't cry. 
and then it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And really? I can't handle this. I think she was sweet. Because her friend, I'm her sister, so uh, I'm her as well. <laughs> she, well, she's like <laughs> co-parenting. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah. She yeah. left me with her when five days after she got her. It okay. Was, it was kind of a spontaneous. Uh, so yeah. Had I had a trip planned? Small, where we put the divider, her friend set it up, and I think it was a little too small. Yeah. And then she didn't know us. Like, she just kind of dealt with it. Too small, you think? They put the divider, and she couldn't walk in. She could only lay this way. Oh. Does that make sense? Oh, she couldn't turn around. Right. Yeah. Turn around well, now. she probably could. I think she we think it was a little small, so that could have been part of the problem. Yeah. Was, like, giving her anxiety. Yeah. I think okay. the problem was I didn't build slowly. Like, in hindsight, I would go back. Got it. I wish I would have read. How's Ravioli in the crate? Uh, he goes in there at night, no problem. He falls right to sleep. He loves it. Uh, when he wakes up in the morning, though, and we take him out, we try to put him back in there. Goes crazy. Goes crazy. But, he, but then, like when I leave did they the use crates with the breeder? Yeah. So so, no, did they used they, like yeah. it sounded like kind of like outdoor dog houses. Like they had their, they would they go in there for food. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's it, it probably. No, oh. He doesn't bark like when we leave him for like when I leave him for work. He doesn't bark. And you put him in the crate. Like, out, we go out for dinner. He won't bark. Yeah. In the crate. The only really, it's like literally the only time is is eight o'clock. He's gotten up already. He doesn't okay. want to go back in. Okay. Got it. I know that's so funny. Yeah. So I failed. I put her in my bed with me, and then I personally was like, "This is emotional support I know. for me." So I can't. I'm not nervous sleep about when she goes through testing phase. That what you're does gonna that mean? like at like five, six months old, yeah. you're about to hit it, where she's just gonna try to test yeah, like no. the shit out of you. It's very hard when you don't have that like boundary to be like. If you act this way, you don't get my attention. You don't get to be out with me. You know. She still has a pig. Okay. Yeah. Into. And she's cool in that. Doesn't in jump out of it. It's no, she can't. As long as she can't jump out of it, because like yeah. I've had, I've seen so many issues with dogs who like are in a pen, and then they can jump out of it or like a I gate, whatever. Like then they're like, oh, yeah, you try to set not. boundaries on me, it's and nothing work. works. And then the dog has major control yeah. issues later on. So um, she. I used to cry when I would put her in the pen then because I work nine to five and she comes during the day because her schedule is flexible because she teaches fitness. Mm -hmm. um, so I would put her in and she would cry and cry and cry every time I left in the mornings and every time she would put her back after she would take her out for a walk. Yeah. And, um, but we went on we went back to where we're from in Ohio, and she was like in the grass lot. She was with the dogs. And since we've gotten back, she doesn't cry when I leave her. Okay, so good. I think it's a step. Yeah. But I think that as long as the pen works and you keep using that some kind of boundary, like as long as she's settled in there and a lot of times when in a pen they just can like jump it or they can just like pace around and they're not fully settled yeah. so as long as you think she's like settles down when she goes in there there's no reason why you can't can't use that for sure yeah do you what do you recommend because i would say if i were home and i put her in the pen she would probably throw a fit which is that mm. is what worries me too because i know that there will be times where she goes up and i'll put her away like, what if you go into a different room if she can hear us, I feel like she cries. But I haven't tried it recently, like in the past two weeks. So. Usually That's when I'm there, I don't know if this is good, but sometimes I'll practice, like when she's in there, like shutting the door, and like, but I'm still there, not moving her. So she yeah. knows it's a comfortable spot, but she's okay. Yeah. Because I, I think the swinging of the door, too, like the, hear, the way you like, hear that wire rattle scares her. Yeah. So I try to like just shut it to be like, it's fine, you're okay. cool. Okay, yeah. Um, baby steps though, because I don't want to be like, you're locked, you're For stuck. sure. I, I'm like about to post this crate desensitization video and you can use it for the pen too. So it's like oh, teaching awesome. like to go in on command and then wait to come out and increasing the time in between that is like how you do total like crate desensitization. Oh, like awesome. how I, hi! Do you want to go show her Nobu? That's one of my friends. Um, yeah, so that's how I did it with like my dog Oso, who had severe anxiety in the crate. That's just like how you would do it with any dog. It's just like on command, how to get them to do it and increasing the time to just make them settled inside of it. So you can do it with the pen, the crate, you still anything. Have the crate. Yeah, I do. So Maybe just start fe like feeding in the crate with it closed and just use the crate for that okay. inside the pen and then doing a little bit of like desensitization work with both. Because the thing is about 
that is a little worrisome that it's like if she can hear you, see you, she wants to control and be out. Yeah. Um, it's easier for a dog to settle in the, in the crate when you do that because you can just put like a sheet over it and she's cool, you know? Yeah. I mean, I always just think about the worst dogs that I've seen just to prepare you. Yeah. She could grow out of it and be the best dog ever and just love her pen and, and just be completely fine. But more than likely, if you're already seeing those kind of behaviors when she hits the testing phase, it's going to be like, I don't want to be in here. And then that barking, that crying escalates to the point where you're like, well, shit, I can't have, you know, I can't have you crying in here. Yeah. So then you give her what she wants and then you just have more Spiral issues. Yeah. yeah, so. That'd be really helpful because I think the problem with me is I, like I said, I thought it was going to take longer. I want to put my deposit down with the breeder and then they were like, do you have one puppy, do you oh. want her? And I was like, I fell in love when they sent me a picture. I was like, yeah. I meet her. Two days later, I got her. And so, you guys just went to Ohio? Yes, she flew on the plane with me too. You should have crate trained her there. She... Oh, she stayed tried? with my friend because oh, we had to go up to my lawn. So I got would, it. Go okay. Cottage, but they had got a dog it. and a lawn. And that's oh, where I okay. think she actually kind of got better. I think the dog okay. rubbed, off, rubbed off on her. I know. Maybe you just need a second one. <laughs> I wish my apartment in New York City wouldn't allow that. Oh, my gosh. Like. But the problem is I think if people don't know how to create train appropriately right when they get a dog, I feel like... I didn't know how to go back because I didn't yeah. build like 10 minutes, 20 minutes, totally. 30 minutes, and I didn't realize it yeah. was like put her in for a few hours at a time, and I think it's starter. So I, was, I think the video you're going to post might yeah, be really helpful. Yeah, it will be. I know. I've told like five people that, honestly, yeah. that have come today. Um, honestly, though, when a puppy is that young, 90% of puppies, you can just put them in for a few hours and get over it because they're you you don't typically traumatize them when they're that young because it's just like something they have to get over then when the dog hits like eight months you have to be sensitive about how you go about it um but she could have been one of the 10 percent that it, it did but i think it's had to do with you know talking to him too it had to do with the fact that she had control going in and out of her little house and sometimes that can be even worse than not ever being introduced to like a crate or a den because a closed crate and an open crate have two completely different concepts if like she has complete control mm -hmm. and then now we're closing the door she's like oh my god what is this i'm not used to, you know i i like my den and i like the freedom to go in and out of it you know so when you do the crate desensitization, you'll want to kind of close the door slowly, open it right away, then let her come out. Like, you'll see the video, and you can message me if you have any questions about it. But, yeah, I think that will be so, so good for her. And even if you just do it minimally with the crate, meal times, and then do it with a pen as well, it will go so far, okay. for sure. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Really yeah. To I'm going to say hi okay, to them. Hi, <laughs> Chloe. Oh my god, yeah, she looks like an adult. Hi, how's it going? How are you? Good. You guys met Nobu? Did I get you dirty? She had all these stomach problems, so then I was going to training and then she was getting really sick. Oh. So the training classes I was doing, the trainers would feed her all these, these treats and yeah. she'd be sick for three days after. Oh. So it's like, how do I keep training if they can't It's very specific treats? to the dog, but what I've seen the most is a dog that, I mean, if it's a certain protein, you can narrow it down. Like a lot of dogs don't do well with chicken. Otherwise, you can do like hydrolyzed protein, which is like broken down protein, which is way easier on their stomach. Or no protein. Protein. So they have like pumpkin apple mm -hmm. treats, okay. and those are amazing for the dog. So, like, what if then they like don't? I would take her to training. In the session, she would stop eating the treats. She just drops some. She doesn't care. She's more interested in the other dogs. And then the trainer's like yelling at me, like, "You don't have good enough treats." And I'm like, well, "I can't get her to What's eat." What's not them. about the treats? I had like then, five different types of treats. Then I would have just backed her up. Like, I think just trying to find a more motivating treat is an easier way to do it. But if it's gonna affect her health and make her sick, that's not worth it. So then you would have to back her up I don't know how far you can back up but back up outside of like the area until she'll sit so there's dogs that aren't food motivated and it takes more time and patience so it's like you're not gonna get there until you sit and focus on me to so find the point where she will and then work your way back up mm -hmm.